Welcome to Iceland. Today we are trying some of the best dishes without breaking the bank. We are Jordan and Soph, and we just finished an eight-day road trip around Iceland via the Ring Road as we explored our 40th and final country for our year-long trip around the world. We have spent the last 12 months trying food from all over the globe, and trying a country's cuisine is one of our favorite ways to dive into the culture. And this is a bamboo worm. Kind of tastes like a Dorito. Over the past week in Iceland, we have already tried some amazing eats, including finding our favorite restaurant to date, which is called Freithimer. This family-run restaurant serves tomato-based dishes in a greenhouse where they grow four different types of tomatoes. We had an all-you-can-eat soup and bread buffet. We also tried an iced tomato latte, which turned out to be really good, just like everything else. It is located about an hour and a half from Reykjavik. On the East Coast, we had vafla, which is an Icelandic take on waffles. They are thin and shaped in six hearts and is a symbol of hospitality. Continuing up the East Coast, in the port town of Sædisfjordur, we saved some money by finding a two-for-one dinner special, where we had free-range lamb, which is a must-try in Iceland, with the country having more sheep than people. We also had pan-seared cod. They were very tasty local dishes. And to cut down on costs, our first stop once we picked up our rental car was to go to the grocery store, where we picked up the famous skier yogurt, which is actually made the same way as cheese and is high in protein and low in fat. Our total for almost a week's worth of groceries was $150. We are now in Reykjavik for the day to try more Icelandic cuisine. You've probably heard of fermented shark. Very popular for tourists to try. Locals don't really eat it so much anymore. It's more of a tribute to the past ways of eating. Eating. So we're not going to be trying that because we really want to enjoy the taste of the food that we eat since it can leave a bad taste in your mouth for a while. But we have lots of other dishes planned like Europe's best hot dog, lobster soup, rye bread ice cream, and whatever else we can find. So let's get going to our first stop. So our first stop of the day is breakfast at the bakery that's right here behind me. It's called Bruth & Co, something like that. Bruth means bread. We apologize in advance for how bad we butcher Icelandic today, but look at this cinnamon roll. How insane does this look? That's basically what it is, a cinnamon roll. We got the plain cinnamon kind. It is like as big as my face and it's warm. This place behind me opened in 2016 and they were so popular that they already have a bunch of locations around Reykjavik. I believe there might be some outside of the city too, but I'm not sure about that. They've got a bunch of pastries. They're known for their high quality sourdough breads. And of course, their amazing cinnamon rolls. So bakeries are a good option to start the day to keep it a little cheaper versus a sit down restaurant. There was no seating in there. So we just grabbed this to go and yeah, now we're gonna try it. An amazing cinnamon roll. How can you really go wrong with this much cinnamon and powdered sugar? Really, really good first stop. So this was 700 kronas, which is the currency here, which is about five US dollars. For this size of a pastry, not too bad. You ready to try some now? Oh, I'm very ready. I love that they even served it warm. Usually you get like cinnamon rolls and they've just been sitting there so they're not warm anymore, but this one still has a little bit of warmth to it. So next we are walking to the port to a restaurant that is called Sea Baron. I believe that the restaurant itself used to have like bunk beds where sailors would sleep and you can still see them in the second story. But we are going because we heard that they have some of the best lobster soup in Iceland. We've already had lamb soup, tomato soup, other vegetable soups, but we have not had lobster soup yet. And after living in Alaska, we do like lobster, we do like crab. So we are going to go give the lobster soup a try kind of check out the harbor area the cinnamon roll was great but we are so really hungry check out these murals jordan i know that's 
big owl just kind of popped out of nowhere. So we also want to say that we're kind of sad, bittersweet, because today is our last food tour on this year-long trip around the world. Tomorrow we're headed back to the States. Maybe our favorite thing from this entire last year is getting to try all the different cuisines. We have learned so much about the food and we've definitely learned to like go outside of our comfort zone and just try the local food. We're so excited to get back home and try and find different cuisines such as Indian or Thai and get to like start going to those restaurants rather than just like the typical Midwestern burger joint. So we just ordered our food here at Sea Baron and it's so popular. The inside is already full, which it's not that big, but it is full. We got the Appleson. I think that's how you say it. It is Icelandic pop that I believe uh, probably tastes like Fanta because it's orange soft drink, but we ordered it to go with our fish. We also got blueling fish to try here too, in addition to our lobster soup. I've never had blueling before. Just another fish caught here off the coast, I believe. So we're gonna give that a try. Our total came to around 35 US dollars, which for two dishes here in Iceland isn't terrible. That was a drink, two dishes, and fingers crossed a free coffee, because there is a coffee shop called Roast or Rost connected to it that looks out to the harbor. So that would be a beautiful place to get a cup of coffee in the morning. And we'll walk around the harbor a little bit too since we're so close to the coast. So without further ado, I will try this orange pop. Yeah, so it tastes like Fanta, almost like a little bit fizzier, but it's just a sweet orange pop. It'll go great with our fish. So here at Sea Baron, there are also like the classic Icelandic dishes that you can try. So we saw fermented shark in there. There was even whale. Now, like we said before, we're not gonna try the fermented shark just because we've heard it's not very popular among locals, nor does it taste very good. Same thing with whale. Uh, back in Alaska, I'd always heard that whale just kind of tastes like a fishy pork. So it doesn't sound super appetizing. And there's some like implications behind eating whale if you're not like actually trying to sustainably live off the whale and just like feeding it to tourists. So we're gonna skip that and just stick with the fish and the lobster. So our lobster soup just came out and the blog I read really steered me wrong because this does not come with free coffee. It's like 300 krona if you want a coffee. So not too expensive, but we're not gonna get one now. But it also came with some bread and some smory, smior, smior Icelandic butter. So very authentic that we'll have with our bread. But first I'm gonna dig into this lobster soup while it's still warm. It smells really good. I was worried that there might not be a lot of lobster in it, but honestly, it looks like there's a good amount for a lobster soup. So I'm really, really happy with that. Let's give it a try. Really hot. Whoa, this is good. You're gonna like this. It's not too fishy. Sometimes with fish soups, can get really fishy tasting. This one has a lot of vegetables in it as well and a nice creamy sauce. The lobster is also really tasty without being overly fishy. I think even if you're not a huge seafood fan, you would really like this dish. All right, let's give Jordan a try. Smell the nose, nose it. Okay. Like a wine taste here. Yeah, doesn't smell fishy at all, which is surprising. Right so warm and delicious. I see why soup is so popular around here, just because it is kind of a chilly place, especially during winter. I'm sure it's just gotta be very cold here. So to have a warm bowl of soup just to hold and drink and just warm you all the way up, delicious. So we were chatting with our Airbnb host about how to pronounce some of these Icelandic words. And the D that has a dash across the upper part, I'll put it right here. The D is pronounced more with a TH, th, but there's different ways that they pronounce TH. Sometimes it's like th, and sometimes it's like t, right? Something like that. I'm probably butchering this horribly, but the D with the cross on the top is 
thoughts about as much as I can help with Icelandic pronunciation. And we are just currently waiting for our main dish, which they already said, but they said it may take about 30 minutes for the fish to be done. So we're just gonna chill out here and wait. So for our second dish, we got a blue wing skewer. Honestly, there's quite a bit more fish on here than I was expecting. I didn't expect nearly this much to be served. There's also like some peppers, onion on here. So blue wing is a North Atlantic fish. It's a member of the cod family. So I expect it to kind of taste like cod, but we'll dig in and see if we like it. It's not bad. It's not great either. It's not nearly as close to cod as I thought it would be. It's a little bit slimier, I think. There's a salmon option in there as well. Loki really wishing I'd gone for that one. That was aggressive bite right there. I don't know. There's something about the flavor of that that just isn't for me. I can't even explain it. It's not even that it's fishy. Just not as good as cod. Time to have another bite of lobster soup. Mm. That's better. So we just finished up at the restaurant right behind us. We can officially say Blue Ling is not for us. After trying food all over the world, we've like left very little food behind. Like we've almost always finished it. But not this Blue Ling. I don't know if it was like the actual fish itself or just the way they cooked it. But yeah, not huge fans at all. And right behind us here is Ross, or however you say it. It's the coffee bar that's right next to the harbor. We're gonna go check out the harbor because it's literally just a few steps away, as you can tell from how windy it is. It looks like they're washing off a whale watching boat right now, which would be fun. You can go see the whales and then you can have it there for lunch. <laughs> We shall continue on to find Europe's best hot dog. Such a cute area. We got sidetracked. Quick little stop into some gift shops because we found a bunch of them. So a little sidetrack from the food tour, but they've got some cute stuff. So we now have the best hot dog in Europe at the stand behind me here. That's called Byron's Best Soup. It's been serving hot dogs here in the harbor since 1937. And the reason it is so delicious is it is a lamb hot dog actually that has Icelandic sweet mustard on it. Remoulade, which I didn't know what remoulade is, but apparently it's like a French cold sauce. It's the brown sauce right here. It can sometimes have curry in it. It's similar to tartar sauce. Sometimes there's chunks of pickles in it. And then not only do we have crispy onions, but we also have raw onions. So combine that all together and you supposedly have Europe's best hot dog, which based on the line that's lined up in front of this hot dog stand, I have to say it's pretty good, but we're gonna give it a try and see. Jordan's more of the hot dog connoisseur, so I'll let him give it a taste, but I'll start. I have to say what's sticking out to me the most is the sweet mustard. It has a really strong flavor, almost like some of the ones that we had in the Balkans. Their mustards were really good and really strong, and this one is too. I've never had a sweet mustard before, but it gives it a nice flavor. And of course, because this is a food tour about affordability, this little guy is $5. Not a bad price when you are in downtown Reykjavik to get a little snack on your walk for five bucks, which is 690 krona. 
time to give it a try. We've had quite a few hot dogs around the island just because they are so cheap everywhere here. And we've grabbed a few just at gas stations just as a quick snack. I would say the hot dog itself is kind of uninspiring, just kind of like another hot dog, but it's definitely all the sauces on top, the mustard, the raw onions, the fried onions, all that mixed together does make it really good. They have literal holders. Look at our little hot dog. Look at how perfect this little hot dog holder is. I think that's so cute. What do we think? Rate it on a scale of one to 10. <clears throat> Not that we've rated any other hot dogs, but. I would rate this an eight. It's good. I don't know. I feel have like there might be better. better. Have you ever had better though? Well, maybe not. I don't know. No. So much pressure now. <laughs> it's good. Very, very good. And next up, it's time for some dessert. We're going to go over to Cafe Loki and grab... Oh. Our trash is blowing away because it's so windy. But next we're going to go grab a little sweet treat on our tour. So next up for our sweet treat, we are getting it at Cafe Loki. Loki was a Nordic god that was known for mischief, but they are most famous for having their rye bread ice cream, which is something you can only get here in Iceland. So we are really excited to check it out. We just got our table here at Cafe Loki. And the best part is that right across the street, you get the view of the iconic church that sits in downtown Reykjavik. The inspiration for it actually came from the basalt columns that you can see around the island that come from the volcanic makeup of the rocks with the forms. We saw them in a few different places. So it's really cool to see how that inspiration translated into building this gorgeous, gorgeous church. So that's the view that you get here at Cafe Loki. And to warm up, I got the priest coffee. And what it is, is it has Brennivan in it. And Brennivan is the iconic Icelandic spirit here. So that is mixed with some coffee, some brown sugar, cream and coffee to top it off. And I thought it sounded really good to go with our rye bread ice cream. So we're gonna give this a quick taste. So much sugar on top. Mm. The cream is really, really good. So the recipe for this rye bread ice cream is over 60 years old and it looks like there's a lot of cream on top and then down in the bottom is where the actual ice cream is. What's actually very unique about the rye bread is they used to cook it here in Iceland with geothermal energy. So they would dig a hole down right next to a geyser, put the bread down there, and then the heat from the geyser would actually end up cooking the bread. But now they still use the rye bread in very creative recipes like this one. It is very delicious, not at all what I was expecting. So when I saw the size of this, I was definitely thinking it was like overpriced for what you get, but it is so good. There are little rye bit pieces throughout this ice cream. It's not something you would think that works, but it really does work. It almost tastes like a gingerbread a little bit since it's such like a dense bread. It looks like it is like toasted on top, but it is really good and it's really different, which is fun to try. So looking at the menu again, it was actually rhubarb syrup that was drizzled on top, which is really delicious. And again, not another ingredient you would expect to be paired with these, but it really worked out well. So this unfortunately ends our food tour here in Iceland. We hope that this gave you a few ideas of some cheap eats here in Reykjavik and the rest of the island as well. We had so much fun not only trying the food but seeing the entire island. So make sure to check out our vlogs from around the ring road if you have not done that already. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in our next video as we head back to the States for home.